Hello everyone, today I'm going to tell you about how to determine the structure of a compound, especially an organic compound that you have. So let's see how it's done. So first of all, you need to know uh, what are the techniques of choice for structure determination of any organic compound? So, the very first technique that uh, you must have is UV visible spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR spectroscopy and mass spectrometry. So these are the four basic techniques that you must have for complete structure elucidation of an unknown organic compound. Now these are not the only techniques from which you can determine the structure of any unknown molecule, but uh, these are the basic techniques uh, which will give you maximum idea about the structure of the molecule in fact, you can get the whole structure through these techniques. Still, if you have some problem, you can go to extra X-ray uh, crystallography and other techniques from where you get more information about the structure. But mostly, uh, you can uh, elucidate the structure using these four techniques. So I'm going to tell you first about the utility of uh, these uh, techniques before we move on to the steps that need to be taken for structure elucidation. So we'll discuss briefly what information uh, can you get from uh, these different techniques and what is their uh, utility in structure elucidation. So first we have the UV visible spectroscopy. Uh, the information that you can get about the structure of a molecule is the presence or absence of a conjugated system. Uh, it will also tell you about the presence of any aromatic system, which of course is also a conjugated system in the molecule. Infrared spectroscopy will tell you about the presence or absence of a particular functional group in the molecule, mass spectrometry will tell you about the molecular mass and the molecular formula of the molecule. NMR spectroscopy will help in identification of different nuclei, for example, carbon and hydrogens present in the structure. These are not the only nuclei that can be studied in NMR, but because we're dealing with organic compounds, which mostly contain uh, carbon and hydrogens. So uh, for structural elucidation of uh, organic molecules uh, usually we go for proton and carbon carbon 13 nmr spectroscopy now you see some uh, stars here in brackets with each of these techniques a four star means that this technique is of uh, maximum utility for structure elucidation it means it has uh, more advantages than limitations in when when we talk about the structure elucidation of molecules so nmr is the best technique mass spectrometry uh, is the second one infrared third and u visible will give you the least information about a molecule so let's see what are the limitations and advantages of all these techniques so u visible spectroscopy uh, will give you information about a fragment of the structure and that fragment uh, obviously is a conjugated system which uh, which will lead to the appearance of a particular pattern or peak in the U-visible uh, spectrum. But obviously, it will not tell you about uh, the whole molecule. It's a non-destructive technique, means it will not destroy your molecule, your sample, your compound, so you can recover it after the experiment. And uh, you need a few milligrams of uh, the sample of your compound uh, to be analyzed uh, on a UV visible spectrophotometer. Next is the infrared spectroscopy. Obviously, it tells you about the presence or absence of a particular functional group, but it does not give you any information about the number of a particular functional group present. For example, if you have uh, a ketone functional group and you have detected it with IR, uh, it will it may not tell you about how many ketones are present there but it may give you some information about 
the nature of a particular functional group. For example, if you have a hydroxyl group, an alcohol functional group in the molecule, and that is detected by infrared, the peak shape and the patterns uh, may help you in identifying whether it's a free or a hydrogen bonded hydroxyl group. If you have detected a ketone, uh, the, the frequency or the wave number data will tell you about uh, whether it's an isolated ketone or it's a conjugated ketone. Conjugated means that it is in conjugation with uh, another double bond that is present in the vicinity or it's an isolated ketone. So the wave numbers will be different for both and uh, that will give you some information about the structure of uh, the molecule. Again, it's a non-destructive technique, so you can recover your sample. And again, a few milligrams uh, of the sample is usually required if you are required to prepare a solution or a disc. Uh, but with the modern FTIR uh, instruments, they need a very minute quantity of your sample for a good IR uh, spectrum. Next is mass spectrometry. Uh, it tells you, it gives you the molecular mass and the molecular formula. Molecular mass uh, obviously will tell you about uh, the mass of the compound. Molecular formula will further give you the elemental composition, which elements are present in the molecule, and you can calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency from the molecular formula. Index of hydrogen deficiency shows how much unsaturation is present in the molecule. It is usually uh, also called the double bond equivalent present in the molecule. The fragmentation pattern that is obtained in the electron impact mass spectrometry uh, technique uh, may give you some idea about the structure or the structural fragments uh, present in the molecule. It's a destructive technique. So once your sample goes in your molecule, your compound goes in, uh, it's not recovered, but luckily, uh, because it's a very sensitive technique, so you can uh, use up to pico milligram, uh, picogram levels of uh, your sample to be analyzed on mass spectrometry. So not much of your sample is lost because of the destructive nature of this technique. Finally, we come to the NMR. NMR has uh, least limitations. It's a very vast, broad technique with a lot of other techniques present, uh, which give you different informations about the structure of the molecule. Uh, there are certain one-dimensional and two-dimensional NMR technique uh, techniques which uh, give you highest information or maximum information about the structure. It's a non-destructive technique. So again, you can recover your sample and you need a few milligrams of the sample for a good NMR spectrum. Now, UV visible spectrophotometers and infrared spectrophotometers are relatively less sensitive and uh, uh, much cheaper as compared to the mass spectrometer and the NMR spectrophotometer, which are more sensitive and expensive. Uh, and it requires um, uh, some training before you can uh, work on these um, uh, instruments. So let's see what are the steps for structure elucidation of an unknown molecule. So you have a pure compound, purity is must because if you don't have a pure compound, it may uh, give you some additional impurity peaks in the spectra uh, and that may lead to wrong uh, analysis or wrong results or you may not be even able to determine the correct structure or you may not uh, be led to the final structure of the compounds. So purity is must, you must have a pure compound. So the first thing you do with this molecule is to go for its EIMS spectrum, that is the electron impact mass spectrometry. It's a hard ionization technique and it will uh, give you the molecular ion peak from which you can uh, determine the molecular mass of the compound. But that is not always uh, true for EIMS. Uh, you may you may or you may not get the molecular ion peak. So if you get the molecular ion peak, so you have the molecular mass, but if you don't get the molecular ion peak, then obviously you cannot see the molecular mass of the compound. So if you don't see any molecular ion peak, 
then try a softer ionization technique which uh, we may discuss in um, uh, some other video lectures later on in detail but uh, here because we are only discussing the steps for analysis so we won't go into those um, details of other techniques but here you just uh, need to know that if you don't get the molecular ion peak in EIMS go for a softer technique there you'll get the molecular ion peak and then you can know the molecular mass so once you have the molecular mass of the compound the next step is to know its molecular formula and that can be obtained from the high resolution EIMS spectrometry once you have the molecular formula you can calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency or the double bond equivalent to know the level of unsaturation in your molecule now next step is to go for proton NMR analysis now proton NMR deals with the uh, analysis or detection of the number and the types of hydrogens present what is meant by the types of hydrogens the uh, different uh, the, the types of uh, magnetically uh, distinct hydrogens which have different or similar magnetic environment because a proto uh, because NMR deals with the magnetic properties of these nuclei so hydrogens may have similar or different magnetic properties uh, depending upon certain factors which again we will not discuss here but it will uh, in short give you an idea about how many hydrogens are there and how many different types of hydrogens are there in the molecule another information that you can get from the proton NMR spectrum is that of the coupling constant coupling constant uh, gives you uh, information about the splitting of the peaks. some peaks may be split and that splitting or extent of splitting of those peaks is uh, determined or calculated from the coupling constant values or the J values of uh, those peaks. Now, protons or hydrogens having or uh, the peaks having similar uh, or equal coupling constant values mean that those two peaks or those two hydrogens or protons are coupled to each other. So this is an additional information that you can get from the proton NMR spectrum that which protons are coupled to which protons and coupling usually is with uh, the most um, uh, the, the closest of the protons or the protons present in the vicinity of another proton. So that is another additional information that you get from the proton NMR spectrum. Then you go for the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. It will tell you just like the proton NMR spectrum. It will tell you about the number and different types of carbons present in the molecule and you will also perform some depth experiments now because carbons can be of different types in the molecule it could be a ch3 a ch2 a methyl, uh, methane carbon or a quaternary carbon so if you, from a simple broadband carbon 13 nmr spectrum you won't be able to differentiate between these four different types of carbons so you have to go for depth 90 depth 135 or depth 45 experiments which will uh, enable you to differentiate between CH3s, CH2s, CHs and the quaternary carbons. So now we know the hydrogens and the carbons present in the molecule. The next step is to connect them. So you would like to know which hydrogens are connected or attached to which carbon atoms. So we go to HSQC which is two, which is a two dimensional NMR uh, technique and uh, the full version is heteronuclear single quantum coherence which means that it's a heteronuclear technique or it shows correlation between hydrogens and carbon so two different nuclei are correlated in this two dimensional technique so it will give you an idea about which hydrogens are attached to which carbons so now you know that these hydrogens uh, attached to these carbons from the HSQC experiment. The next experiment is another two-dimensional NMR uh, technique that uh, means correlation spectroscopy or COSI in short. COSI gives you information about 
protons that are germinal or vicinal to each other. So protons attached to the same carbon atom will show correlation in COSY experiment or protons attached to vicinal or adjacent carbon atoms will also give you correlation or in uh, peaks in the COSY spectrum. So again, it tells you about protons that are closer to each other in the molecule. This information is also obtained, as I told you earlier, from the coupling constant values in proton NMR. So you can confirm this information from the coupling constant uh, data in proton NMR spectrum, or you can confirm this information from the COSY data or spectrum. This will enable you to, sh to form small fragments. So you can form small fragments uh, using information obtained from COSY. So you can connect vicinal carbons and that will lead to uh, formation of certain small fragments. Now, you want to connect these small fragments. So you need another technique for that and that is the heteronuclear multi multiple bond correlation HMBC experiment. Again, it's a heteronuclear technique. Uh, which gives you long range proton and carbon 13 couplings. Long range means it could give you uh, three bond couplings or uh, even two bond couplings. In rare cases, it may give you some four bond coupling, but that usually is not seen or observed in HMBC. So usually you have three bond couplings. So from the COSY, which is a homonuclear technique, so that is that shows correlation between proton, proton, HMBC shows correlation between proton carbon 13. COSY gives you smaller fragments and that fra those fragments are joined together through HMBC to get some larger fragments. And when you connect all these fragments, you will get the whole structure, right? The final thing, now you have the skeleton, the whole structure of the molecule. The final thing you want to know about is uh, the stereochemistry if it is present in the molecule, if there are uh, certain centers or carbon atoms that have uh, that are asymmetric or that uh, have cert, cert, uh, certain stereochemistry, so that could be determined from another two-dimensional technique, which we call the nosy nuclear Orhauser uh, effect spectroscopy, uh, which will tell you about the stereochemical identi identity of a molecule. So you have maximum information from the um, mass spectrometry and NMR spectrom spectroscopy about the structure of a molecule. Still, for some confirmation, you can go and perform the infrared spectroscopy, which will tell you about the functional groups present in the molecules. So if you are still confused about the data obtained from NMR, uh, some functional groups that you have detected from the NMR spectrum. If you're confused about that, just go and confirm it from the infrared spectrum. If you can, if you have the same data for the same functional groups, then obviously it is confirmed. And finally, you can also perform the UV visible spectroscopy, which will tell you about the lambda max of the molecule and the molar absorptivity values. So now you see that infrared and UV visible spectroscopy are usually of little uh, or least utility when it comes to structure elucidation. Most of the information about the molecule is obtained from mass spectrometry and NMR spectroscopy. So now you are in a position to propose a structure for the molecule. Now this is an overview of uh, how to proceed for structure elucidation. We will discuss all these techniques in details in the upcoming uh, videos. So stay tuned and please watch this till the end. Thank you so much.